Hi there, this is Eugenie. I'm a first year PhD student in the Electrical Engineering and Computer Science Department here at MIT. In my grad application cycle, um, I applied to eight PhD programs in computer science, and I was fortunate to get into all of the programs I applied to. Specifically, um, after I received the official offers from UBC, MIT, Berkeley, UW, and U Michigan, I withdrew my application from um, Columbia, NYU, and uh, Maryland because I didn't want to hurt the chances for other applicants. But this result is not random. I actually planned my application for two years. And I know there's a lot of videos talking about the stats, the uh, reference letters, the SOP as a shiny final product, but not enough behind the scenes to show people how they actually got there. There is also the lack of extracting and refining the personal experiences to something more high level um, that could be used potentially by other people to replicate that experience. So in this video, I want to share two things. <laughs> so first, um, I want to share how I planned and my thought process behind every single critical decision. And second, I want to share some high-level takeaways that others could potentially use. So we have to go way back to 2018. It's fall 2018, and I just finished my first internship in the industry as a full-stack developer. After that, I was like, fork, I might hate this. <laughs> One thing that drove me nuts, kind of, um, is how quickly the work could become so mundane to me. Learning the technologies is fun and engaging, but once I, I was over the learning curve, everything just became so repetitive to me. I also felt the lack of meaning at work for a couple reasons again, but one thing is that I felt that whatever I was doing at the moment could be done by any developer. Um, so why me? At the end of summer 2018, I had a quarter-life crisis. Because going to the industry after graduation was the only path that I ever considered. After discovering those feelings, I was like, what am I going to do with my life? And I also started to have more questions like, um, what am I actually motivated by? And fall 2018, the start of my fourth year at UBC um, is the first time I ever started to consider research and grad school. It was a good way to figure out what a thing is, is to actually do it or um, getting close to it, or getting close to people who are doing it. So I was like, well, maybe I should consider joining a lab um, so I can observe people and also gain some, you know, research-related experiences to actually figure out what it is. At this time, I was taking one third-year level computer science class, and I was the biggest introvert. Well, I am still am the biggest introvert I know. <laughs> um, so I never spoke up in class, but what I would do is after class, I would, you know, go talk to the professor one-on-one -on -one and ask my questions. So. Um, in that class, the professor actually knows me. So one day after class, I went up to him with all my courage that I had at the time. I was like, hey, professor, I'm interested in research. Are you looking for any undergrad research assistants or do you know anyone? And so he was not at the time, but he gave me a name. And then I asked if I could uh, mention him uh, when I called email the professor. From there, I started to work in the lab where I started um, to tag along in the reading groups um, but then I end up working the lab in that particular lab for three years. I was getting some taste of research in the lab that I just joined. I was helping out a PhD student on his project um, as a you know developer but I could join the research meetings etc. But I was still not set on um, the idea of research and grad school. 
one day I was browsing the school newsletter and I saw that the Data Science Institute at UBC, um, University of British Columbia, which is my undergrad university, uh, was hiring for the summer uh, data scientist intern. So the opportunity was kind of between applied ML, so research, and the industry, because it has the software development element to it as well. I thought it was perfect because um, at the time, you know, I didn't know if I wanted to do grad school, but the experience is very versatile, could be uh, pivoted towards either, so either research or um, the industry. So fast forward to 2019 summer. So I was working full time as a uh, data scientist intern at the Data Science Institute at UBC and also volunteering in the lab. But by the time, fortunately, um, I figured that I really like research um, for the ownership and autonomy of my work. So the goal has become more clear at this point. Um, I want to do grad school. Uh, specifically, I want to get into a PhD program in computer science. But then, you know, there's a new question uh, popping out, right? Um, you know, which field in computer science? <laughs> um, it's kind of like the Russian doll situation where you feel like you just solved the problem, but then you thought that solving the problem would make your world, um, you know, rainbows and unicorns, but then no, more problems to come. <laughs> which field in computer science, right? So you know, like you hear those words like machine learning, reinforcement learning, a blockchain. You know, those are technologies. You know, what is the problem space that I'm motivated by or I'm intrigued by? It's kind of like the urge to make something right. You know, I, at that point, I haven't felt anything like that before. Or I, I actually I didn't know like what would make me feel that way. Summer 2019, I was on the hunt uh, for an answer to this new question. And also because I, I was sure that I wanted to do grad school, um, one of the biggest things for grad school applications, I was thinking about uh, applications and stuff, one of the biggest things for grad school applications is reference letters. You know, I think that's one of the most, maybe the most important component of your grad school application. So at the time, I was also on the hunt for my third reference letter. There is one professor that I've been eyeing on for a while, and he happened to be teaching um, a grad class in spring 2020. And it's not any grad class, it's a project-based research oriented grad class where uh, lecture times are like research meetings or discussions um, so there's no lectures just research meetings and discussions but this means that i could be working closely with him you need that for a good reference letter that's like the foundation you need to be working with the professor uh closely so then, you know, they can observe you um, as a researcher in progress because <laughs> they need to speak about your research quality. That's the only way they can get to know you, you know, is to do research with them. And it was a hard class. Like, I cried almost bi-weekly when I was in that class and the professor only told me afterwards that I was the first undergrad ever in that class. So by the end of my two-year journey, I accomplished three things simultaneously. So I answered my own questions about motivation, my purpose, and just life in general. And second, I got three strong, solid reference letters. And third, I also collected all the experiences I need. So those are raw materials I need to have or to develop a strong SOP. So now we're getting to the high level um, 
things. So a couple things I did to make this happen. Maybe there's more, <laughs> but I can think of three right now. So first is my approach to this. I started this journey with a hypothesis for a question, and then I took a agile approach. So for example, I had a question of what am I motivated by? What am I going to do with my life? You know, I tried to join a lab. I collected some um, research experiences and I sat back and tried to assess how I felt, did some reflection, adjusted my plan accordingly. So from this um, agile approach, my goal was becoming more and more clear. And once my goal becomes more clear, I would look at my timeline as a whole and I would work backwards. For example, once I figured that I really like research and I want to get into a PhD program in computer science, I looked at what I need to you know, get into such a program and I mapped out my timeline based on that. This approach is different from the first one because this one allows me to look at the whole situation from a holistic view. Before it was more like, oh, how do I do things um, in a efficient way locally, <laughs> kind of like short-term planning. Um, this one is more like a long-term approach. So how can I do things in the long term? But then you have to do those two things um, together. <laughs> No, short-term planning and long-term planning they work together and the third thing is about the mindset i think this is very important long-term planning and the execution of a long-term plan is very hard mentally the reward is not instantaneous and actually the reward is not even guaranteed because you know there's a risk factor so it's not guaranteed that i will get into a top PhD program, there's no, I don't know that. My solution to this is to look at the task I was doing at the time and I made sure that I actually enjoyed what I was doing at the moment. Actually, I was having a lot of fun on all the projects I worked on. It's a blessing already that I was working on those projects. Make sure you enjoy what you're doing regardless of the outcome of the long-term goal. <laughs> so, yeah, um, at the end of the video, I shared my thought process, the story, so the facts, you know, the facts in the physical world, my thought process in my head, <laughs> um, and some high-level takeaways that I can observe <laughs> from my experience. Keeping light, there, there is a lot of individuality. That's where you feel like um, they, some things can be beneficial for other people to know or hear. Please comment down below. Um, subscribe if you want to see me <laughs> again. Um, I'm trying to upload twice a month, <laughs> but of course, research comes first. Um, yeah. <laughs> see you when I see you. <laughs>